my goodness. This is just as beautiful as I remember. This is the Methodist church I was raised in as a child. Such great care and intricacy was taken in commemorating the faith we hold so dear. From the pipe organ to the stained glass, everything contains its own memory. In fact, as a child, it was somewhat daunting coming in here every Sunday. My mom would pinch me if I made the slightest noise or messed anything up. I didn't understand the importance of what any of the symbolism meant. In fact, when I decided to truly study the Bible, I felt just as overwhelmed. With so many translations, so many books, so many verses, I literally had no clue where to begin. I tried one version after another, just hoping one would make sense to me. While initially I didn't know how to study the Bible, the more I continued to read, the more my mind began to change and I began to understand what didn't make sense to me. I literally was being transformed by the renewing of my mind, like Romans 12, 2 says. I learned that choosing a translation I was comfortable with was a huge help. While all the translations use slightly different wording, they all meant the same thing. One translation was no better than another. It also helped me to find a Bible I could take notes in. All these Bibles are beautiful, but you need one that you can highlight passages in, take notes in, and make a study sheet out of. People always ask me, Riley, where should I begin reading? And I believe you should start studying in the book of John. John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word. Everything we do should start with the Word. Verse 14 says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word has to become real in your life. It has to become more than stories, more than mere history. It has to become living and breathing on the inside of you. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more we study His Word, the more we repeat His promises, the more faith begins to rise up within us. Begin to study scriptures that apply to your life and the situations that you're going through. I like what Psalm 91 says. It says, this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him, for He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from the deadly disease. Philippians 4.19 says that He will supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. For every lie that the enemy tries to bring against you, the truth found in God's Word is ready to combat it. Our job is to hide these truths in our hearts so that when Satan tries to take advantage of you, you can stand on the Word and put him under your feet where he belongs.